I met an ex-gorilla poacher called Joe Mello. He's now working undercover to stop gorilla meat being sold here. An estimated 15 to 20 gorillas a day are sold in Africa for meat. That's 6,000 a year. I asked him why people eat gorilla. It's good meat. Very good, very sweet meat. It's quite a disturbing notion, actually, to, to think that it's so readily available. We're saying there's such a chain of gorilla meat coming into the market. You see, every day in the market you can find gorilla meat, every day in the market you can find elephant meat, every day in the market, every day, like chicken. I was amazed that people want to eat gorillas, but here they're just meat. And I was really shocked when Joe told me that there's another under-the-counter trade here and in towns all over West Africa. A trade in live baby gorillas. And make everything all right. My body's shaking right through my bones. So take me by the hand. Please don't leave me here alone. Cause I want you to save me. Most die. Just please save me. But a few, a very save small few, are found and rescued. Rachel Hogan becomes their surrogate mum at the Cameroon Wildlife Aid Fund at Mefu. That's all right. Yeah. Being nice. Rachel came from Birmingham to Africa and was so shocked she gave up everything to help. It's just heartbreaking when an infant comes in, especially when you see some of the cases. We find them in cardboard boxes. Um, we find them in carrier bags, tied up with rope, horrific gunshot wounds up their arms because they're holding on to their mother. When the hunter shoots the mother, the baby stays with the mother, and so he normally gets a lot of the gunshot blast on his arm. But when an infant arrives to us, they do not become a human. We have to become a gorilla. We have to learn what they eat. We have to learn how they react, how they act, all their social behavior. And that's how we have to be with them. I had to stay behind the fence in case I gave the babies a bug. We're so closely related, they catch human colds and other illnesses really easily. The more I sort of learn about them, the more they are so similar to or at this stage, the babies, they are, they you know, the, the, and, and even young kids who have been abused, it's the similar thing, isn't it? It's, you have to, it's not just a case of giving them food and... No, it's all about emotional support as well, and that's the main thing with, with gorillas. Normally, the infants are too small to be killed for meat, so the hunter will take them and try and keep them alive to sell them, maybe as pets. But with gorillas, they're so sensitive and emotionally fragile. It's really difficult. You know, within 24 hours, 48 hours, they just give up and die. It's so sad, isn't it? Doesn't that show how emotional they are? They're I mean, as so you tell me fragile. that, it makes me think this, that's so sensitive. They really are sensitive. That's why we have one-to-one -one care with, with infant gorillas, because they have to build the confidence in one person, and that person replaces the parent. Yeah. Um, but it's just so difficult. How do you feel when a new orphan comes in? It just really breaks your heart. You know, when they decide to then give you a chance, it's just, yeah. you can't describe the feeling. To, to have this, that they've put their trust in you. It's That's unbelievable. So these gorillas here, they're the lucky ones because they're the survivors. Yeah, these guys are the lucky ones, but what you need to understand is that we're not an answer to the problem. We're like a sticking plaster over the whole bush issue. 